everybody. This is Boris Schlossberg from BK Forex, and today I'm very, very happy to host the MT4, MT5 Webinar 1, sponsored by Pepperstone, where we're going to basically learn the MT4, MT5 platforms. This is a beginner webinar, so um, what we're going to learn in the webinar is the basic functions of just how to use the Pepperstone Secure Client login, how to download MetaTrader, a general walkthrough of both the MT4 and MT5 platforms, and then we're going to learn how to place a trade, how to create a chart, how to make a template, and then how to save a profile. So just the basic user interface functions uh, in order to essentially make it easy for you to be able to use it. So the first thing we do is I'm just going to actually going to walk you through all the slides if you don't mind, and then I will come back to, to each one of them one by one. The first thing you do, the process for anybody who wants to uh, begin using MetaTrader 4 is you have to create an account on Pepperstone, which is I recommend everybody do if you don't have a don't have one. Um, and you can download demo accounts. You don't have to have a real account. You can just download demo accounts and play around with it. I'll show you exactly how to do it. So um, all your functionality comes from the Pepperstone Secure Client login, which I recommend you do. Then I'm going to take a look at both platforms. Uh, we're going to do a trading walkthrough, and uh, we'll take a look at how to configure charts. And then we'll take a look at how to configure templates. And then we'll take a look at how to do profiles. Profiles are basically, as you can see over here in this, in this uh, slide, there's a multiple amount of charts. This is actually a live profile that I have working of, um, in, in one, of, one of our BK Forex chat rooms um, of like a variety of, it's a portfolio of strategies. And all of it is saved as one single profile, allowing me to basically um, uh, make it you know one single touch button and of course um, the information provided here has been produced by third parties does not reflect the opinion of pepperstone and information has been provided without any alteration or verification so information contained in this video is generic generic in nature and for educational purposes only and i ask you to read this disclaimer fully to understand that leverage trading in forex derivatives precious metal cfds or any other of exchange products carries a high level risk to your capital um, you do not own or have any rights to the underlying assets trading is not suitable for anyone for everyone and may result in losses greater than your deposits. Past performance is no indicative of future risks. Okay, so um, let's start at the beginning. Let's go, and I'm gonna now, basically, that's the end of my wonderful slides, because now we're gonna get real. Now we're gonna go into this uh, Pepperstone Secure Client login. And I have already uh, created several demo accounts, but I'm gonna do another one for you guys, because I want you to, I wanna take you hand by hand and walk you through this process so that you fully understand there is nothing missing. You fully understand exactly what to do at every single step. So I'm going to log in. I already obviously have a, a client login. And I have some live accounts and I have some demo accounts. What we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of demo accounts. So I'm going to go to demo. I'm going to hit this plus button over here to request an account. And I'm going to create an MT4 account and an MT5 account. So I've already created two of them over here, but I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to create, first let's do MT4, MetaTrader 4. And we'll call this Boris PM, since it's PM in, the, uh, um, in New York. And we'll make this one a dollar account, since I'm an American. but of course, you can make it any kind of currency, and if you're in Australia, you probably want to make it an Australian account. And there's two types of accounts here. There's the standard account and the Razor account. Standard account basically means the bid ask uh, contains all the um, costs to your trade. So typically, let's say the euro right now is trading 112.10 by 112.11. The spread is one pip. You buy on the offer, you sell on the bid. That one pip spread, that's the only cost. Uh, to the trade there's no there's no additional fees a razor account is going to have a much much tighter spread so the spread is sometimes going to be zero literally one twelve ten by one twelve ten sometimes it'll be one by one one twelve ten point one by one twelve ten um, and the advantage of that of course is if you're trading intraday and you're trying to get prices executed you certainly want to have as narrow a spread as possible the flip side of that is you're going to get charged commission um, on both sides, which is essentially going to be equivalent to spread anyways. But the advantage is that you might get your trades done faster. So I'm going to just choose Razor because I always like trading tighter spreads. I don't mind paying commission. And I'll say submit. Um, and now 
It's going to create my Boris PM account. Now, what's very cool about the uh, Pepperstone Secure Client Login is it's going to generate some, you know, here's it's generating this, this crazy password for me. Now, instead of me taking that password, I can actually change the password right over here, and I'm going to change it to my default password, which I always use, which I can't tell you about because literally every single account that I have has this password. I'm like the worst person when it comes to security. Um, and now, as you can see, without me even opening up the account, uh, the password has been it has been changed. So I'm going to close this up, and now we're going to do just one other thing. Uh, now we're going to um, we're going to add an MT5 account. Okay. So now we're going to go platform administrator five, and now we'll call this Boris PM MT5. And this one will make Australian dollar just because we'll pay homage to the home country. And again, I'm going to make it Razor. And this is this is the MT5. So we'll have one MT4, one MT5. I'll hit submit. And um, in this case, I'm going to just do an edit and do it one more time. Just change the password to something reasonable. Okay, excellent. So we're going to close this up. Okay. Now, right over here in the in the downloads tab over here, if you click this this tab, you can download the software. Okay. And obviously, this is a conversation I had in the morning session today, and I'm going to reaffirm my my view in the um, uh, in the evening session that. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just reading the questions here. All the EAs that are shown in my webinars are tested and have worked on Pepperstone. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. But um, we're not going to talk about EAs today. MT4 Edge 6 MT4 platform is a simple one or has that difference. It doesn't matter. Um, it's all MT4. There is no difference between Edge 6 or Edge 5. That's simply the server names. Um, but what is very, very important? And this is just my own personal opinion. So I'm expressing this to you to, to basically make you understand that I think this is um, this is going to make your life much easier. You can do a web version. You can do a Mac version. None of them are going to work nearly as well and have nearly as much functionality as the Windows version because MT4 is a Windows platform. All these other things are bastardizations. Of the original platform so um, there's only two solutions in my opinion if you want to be serious about trading MetaTrader 5 or MetaTrader 4 which is either get yourself a Windows laptop it costs a whopping $250 right now I'm trading on this ThinkPad Lenovo with a um, SSD hard drive that I bought for $250 and I absolutely love it it's the first time in 10 years that I actually like a Windows machine on Windows 10 or you can rent space in the cloud for a Windows environment and run your MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5 in the cloud, which, by the way, you're going to do any, once you get serious about trading, you're going to do that anyways. We'll talk about that in webinar two. But irrespective of what you do, if you really want to use this to its full extent, don't cut corners. Use a Windows environment because that's going to make the whole experience much less problematic for you, okay? So, um, okay, so um, on the download section over here, you can just simply download it. I've already downloaded this a thousand times, and so I have all of it in my downloads, downloads folder. So let me just sort of show you what I can. So first of all, let me just minimize all this and show you what I already have. I already have uh, version one of MT4 and MT5. A second version that I did this morning of MT4 and MT5, and now I'm just going to I'm going to create a third instance. A third instance. One of the reasons why I'm, why I'm going to do this is because this is a very cool little trick that almost nobody teaches uh, anybody when they start out. When you're running MetaTrader, right? 
uh, almost everybody kind of just simply runs a one single instant of MetaTrader. So like just only one particular, let's say if they're running MetaTrader 4, it'll only be one little button or MetaTrader 5, one little button, which is okay if what you're doing is essentially running one single account and you're trading everything through your one account. But very often, in fact, the, the more uh, advanced you become as a trader, you're gonna run different strategies. And typically, you're gonna wanna segregate those strategies into separate accounts. As you can see, it's super easy to open an account with Pepperstone, it takes less than five seconds. So you can have as many as 10 separate accounts. But in order to effectively manage each one of these accounts, you need a separate instance of MT4. Otherwise, you'd simply have to log into a, to a separate account off of one single button. Imagine, wouldn't it be nice if you had account one over here and account two over here and account three over here so that you could just log in. So what I'm gonna show you right now is exactly how to do this correct from the moment go so that you can create a completely separate instance of MT4, MT5 onto your desktop, okay? So I already, as I said, I already have all of this downloaded um, in my downloads folder a thousand times over. And you can see that four is the empty four, five is the five. Let's um, install four first, and then we're gonna install five. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a third instance, a third instance of our MT4, MT5 components. So we're gonna say yes. Here's the one key thing you need to do to make sure you're doing it correctly. You wanna hit the settings button. You wanna definitely unclick this because it's just gonna simply do a pop-up splash page, advertising page. And in the installation folder, you wanna say dash three because what this is going to do is essentially in Windows, create a separate folder from the folder dash one and dash two in order for you to create a separate button on your, on your desktop. So I'm gonna say next. And uh, they'll just keep on going. And very, very soon, um, it's going to set itself up. As you can see already in the bottom of, of your screen over here, it's already created a fresh, new, little, clean um, icon for me. I'm going to hit Finish. And what it's going to do is it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop up and um, ask you to log in. So we're going to ignore that for now because I'm going to show you how to log in in just one second. Maybe it won't pop up. I mean, no, it, it is. It takes it takes a while. It's a little bit slow. So the first time, the first time it instantiates itself, it's a little slow. So it takes a while to pop up. So it's going to. Um, we'll give it just a second to um, uh, to organize itself, and I'm actually going to close it because I don't. I don't really. Uh, I'll show you. And I close all this because um, I don't want the, uh, um, what I'm going to do now now is I'm just going to simply rename this into Boris dash three. So now that we know this is like a third instance of my MT4. Now we're going to do the same thing with MT5, which is very similar. I was saying this morning, and again, we're going to do the same process. Remember, make sure you hit the settings button. Make sure you unclick OpenMQL and make sure you hit this into dash three. This way it's gonna create a whole new folder directory in Windows. And it's gonna do the same thing. Um, so it's amazing how similar these two platforms are. Obviously MetaTrader 5 is much more advanced, uh, much faster, but the user interface really is, is very, very similar. There's just some key differences that I'm gonna go through with you today. Um, but generally it's, it, you know, it's not a complicated, complex process to move from one to the other, that's why um, I think it's so. I'm going to hit finish, and now it's going now it's going to pop up. Also, just going to give it just one second, and um, uh, we'll let it go. So then I'm going to I'm just going to um, just bear bear with me a second. Okay, so here's the um, uh, MT5. So I'm going to say cancel over here, and we already have an account number, and I already obviously created my own password. So I'm going to show you how to log into MT5. I'm gonna go into file, um, log into trade account. And in my, uh, where is this over here? Let's go back to my account in my demo. Okay, so this is my demo MT5. The account number over here is four, 
41640. I'm going to just copy it. And the, the server over here is demo one. Do you guys see the little, little pop out um, button that says demo one? It's on demo one. I think there's only there's only one demo server on it on the MT5 platform. So what I'm going to do is, all I have to do in order to log in is uh, paste my account number. It's it's already defaulted to Pepperstone demo, right? And I'm just going to simply type in my password. I'm going to give it a second. Because it takes it takes it takes a second to connect, and hopefully it will connect. Okay, and you see it it lit up. It gives me the account number. It connects, right? It shows me ten thousand Aussie in here, and it already actually brings in it, you know collects all the data, and now we're getting live quotes. You know, Euro trading twelve oh nine, pound trading twelve oh seven, and sort of to show you by the way. The, the advantage of the Razor platform, you see how tight the spread is. It's six, seven, it's one tenth of a pip, okay? So to do the same thing on uh, MT4, we're gonna log into MT4. It's 803 by four, I'm gonna copy this. And this particular platform, I believe is demo, demo two. You see it says demo two over here. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna minimize this for one second. We're going to go to Boris 3, which was my um, MT4. And I'm going to just ignore this screen. You don't really need this screen. I'm going to say cancel. And again, I'm going to paste my account number. My drop down menu here is demo 2. Remember, it's demo 2. And here's my password. And let's uh, let's see if this will connect. It looks like this this connected very very fast. And so um, now this is the MT4 platform, and the other one is MT5. Now, now that we've connected to the platforms, um, we're going to do the first very very important thing. Um, there's a, there's a couple of questions here just before. So let me just stop and just take a few questions before before I move on. Is it possible to trade an MT4 account with an MT4 five client? No, it is not. Um, it is not a couple of things that you should know right away. It is not possible to use any MT4 developed indicators or scripts or robots or expert advisors in MT5. It's a completely separate code base, so you have to use completely separate code. Okay. Um, eventually, the world is going to move over to MT5. MetaTrader 4 is, is uh, phasing out all MT4 products, but it's going to take a little while. But and then the reason why it's taking so while is, because, is precisely because it's taking, it's taking a while to uh, to move the code over. But eventually, everybody we are re rewriting all of our code to MT5, and uh, so is the rest of the world. But that's the uh, difference. What is the main difference between MT4 and MT5? Uh, aside from the fact that MT5 is obviously much newer, much faster, much better looking, um, has a uh, Lots of uh, I don't want to get into all the computer jargon, but lots of you know it's a multi-threaded platform. Blah blah blah. It allows MT5 allows the trading of virtually any financial instrument, from stocks to futures to CFDs to FX to everything else. Um, and that is the reason why everybody is eventually moving um, to MT5. Okay. Um, Um, okay, all right, so here's what I want to show anybody who's brand new to this and maybe even somebody who's not brand new. <clears throat> I'm right now in MT4, and what you will see is that, let, I'm just going to do this because I really don't care. Now, let's say I want to buy your dollar, right? Um, and the first time I buy it, it's going to give me this, this splash screen saying, hey, you know, are you sure you want to do single click buying? But I bought it, right? I bought it. Here's the problem. I wasn't paying attention. And I bought it, and the default size for this trade is full 100,000 units, a standard lot. And as you can see, as you can see, I'm already down seven dollars on this particular trade because I ate um, 
you know, it's a huge size for where I, you know, for where I want to be. You know, for some of you, that may not be a problem. But the point is, imagine you are in a, you have a thousand dollar account and now you bought a hundred thousand unit position. Now, for, again, for some of you, that may not matter. But for those of you who want to take trading seriously, that's a stupid, stupid thing to do. And it's very common. The problem is it's the, the, the error that you make. It's not an error. It's an error of omission. And the reason why is because all of MetaTrader stuff defaults to full standard lot on, on the volume. So how do we make sure the first thing we do to nip that problem in the butt? What we do is we go into tools, we go into options. We go into, so tools, options, trade, trade tab. And size by default, we change our default setting to something that we consider to be you know, much more palatable to us. Now, some of you may, may actually consider to go up, but let's say I'm gonna consider to go down and say I wanna only trade 10,000 uh, units as, as, my, as my default position. If I do that, if I do that, then um, once I create a, you know, all of these are, are old charts, but once I pop up a new chart, let's just say I do a new chart here, chart window, you will see that as uh, my new default size comes in at 10 instead of, instead of uh, 100. So now my size is only $1 per pip instead of $10 per pip. So if I wanted to buy, Euro dollar, let's just make it lateral. Let's make it dollar yen since we already bought euro dollar. Um, let's say I actually, I actually like yen. I'm going to get long yen. So this is like if I was trading for real, which I would be, um, I'm going to get long yen. So it doesn't matter. So this is this is a trade that I like this one, right now. So now I bought yen and I'm at a much more comfortable rate and level to what I want to trade. Now I'm trading for a dollar a pip instead of trading for $10 a pip, right? So that's a the first thing I do with any of the uh, uh, MT4s and MT5s, the same process, by the way, happens on MT5. We just simply have to go into Tools, Options, um, Trade, and Volume. And here we want to, by default, we just simply want to change that to whatever whatever volume we want to use. Okay. So uh, this is very important. I recommend you guys do this. Um, essentially as, as the first order of business whenever you set it up so that next time so that when you're actually trading um, especially in, in a real real account environment you don't make the unforced error of trading too large a size for what you want to do okay so now let's first of all let me just kind of stop let me see if there's any additional questions about anything I showed you um, Somebody's asking me if they've, Ishwar's asking me if they've, if they downloaded MT4, should they delete that and trade MT5? Um, it, you can trade either. Uh, we're now sort of in a parallel world where both platforms are traded. That's why I'm doing a, you know, a full explanation of both platforms. Um, but the future of trading is going to be MT5, whether you like it or not, and whether, um, you know, there, there, there is a, there's, of course, a massive, massive constituency of people who've traded MT4 for years. So it's like moving, it's literally like moving a dinosaur to move up to MT5. But as code gets written, the, the, the single biggest um, catalyst for everybody moving to MT5 is as soon as, as people rewrite all their code to MT5, there'll be no reason to, to run MT4. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that we're going to provide for you um, at the end of the second webinar on Thursday is this, this piece of software that we wrote that is both an MT4 and MT5 that you can use in either platform, okay? Okay, so um, so um, somebody's asking me, can they use uh, a cell phone? Uh, and this, the mobile platform is not covered in this particular presentation. But what I will say is that you need to understand that all mobile versions, that is anything that you're trading on your phone, does not have the ability to trade robots. So everything you do on the phone is basically point and click. It's a point and click version. Those are very useful if you sort of want to update trades or you know change, uh, you adjust your, your positions or stuff like that. But if you actually want to run a robot, you can't do it off your phone 
you can do it only off the desktop because the phone does not have the robot functionalities. Um, so Jay is asking, can, can we also put in a predetermined stop and target for 50 points each emergencies? Well, I'm actually going to I'm going to provide you with a tool to do that, Jay, by the end of by Jay and the end of our time together. Um, right. Um, okay. So uh, now let's move on to the user interface platform. I have a lot of questions, by the way, about um, the residency and accounts and everything else. Those are account opening questions that you guys should direct to Pepperstone uh, sales. Um, I, my job here is to show you the platforms, okay? So please don't ask me any questions related to actual account openings. Okay, we have essentially five components to the, to the uh, MT4 or MT5 trader platform. The first component is called Market Watch, and that's basically where you get all of your quotes. The second component is called Navigator, and that's basically where it is, it's a tree-based system where your account information is put in, uh, indicators are in this in this in this component. Expert advisors, which is basically robots, scripts, and then in MT5, there's also a, a tab for services. When we go to MT4, when we go down over here, you see it's a sort of a very similar type of a structure, but it doesn't have the services. But the same kind of a thing: accounts, indicators, expert advisors. Very very similar interface in both of these um, in both of these platforms. That's why I was saying to you that they're super super easy to um, uh, to structure. Um, see, I'm up, I'm up on my yen. I told you, I told you I'm long yen today. So let's start first in trying to understand these two pieces, and then we'll go on to the other pieces of the of the platform. Um, when you go to Market Watch, if you right click this particular uh, window, you can get a chance to see all the symbols, hide all or show all. So a simple thing that I like to do is just simply go to show all, and this will show me all the symbols that are available on this particular platform to be able to trade. I can do the exact same thing in MetaTrader, oops, in MT5. So again, it's just, you see, by the way, how nice cleaner and just, just sharper and better looking the, the user interface is, but it's the same, same idea. So I'm gonna go show all, and now it shows me all of the uh, uh, symbols that is available on this platform, okay? Uh, this piece, of course, is the chart piece. This simply shows you all sorts of charts, and this little window allows you to, um, you can either do this, it's called a tabular format, so one chart, you're just looking at one single chart, and you go by tab, or you could see what are all the charts in one single window by hitting, by hitting this, this, this crossbar window. This is the exact same functionality in, um, in MetaTrader 4. You can go by, single chart or in this case we only have two charts so it's going to divide the uh the screen by two charts okay the last uh piece of uh sort of self-contained um, components in, in metatrader 4 is this thing called the trade blotter and within here you're basically this is where all of your trade positions are, are visible to you um, alerts news account history um, all of your trade history is, is available to you uh, journaling and um, any kind of uh, historical messaging on, on your MT4 experts. For our purposes, which is just basically beginner purposes, all we really care about is watching the trade tab because that shows us what trades are live and how they are outstanding. So, Market Watch, Navigator, Terminal, and the chart is the four mainstays. Of both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. All right, let me see if there's any, any other questions here. Okay, so questions are a couple of questions. So now let's take a look at uh, the ribbon. The ribbon is all of these buttons on top, and what do they do? They they essentially duplicate a lot of um, the you know the the drop down menus that you see here. So for example, this particular button, um, if I click it over here. We'll just simply create a new chart 
for any symbol that I define in the driver. Let's, let's say I'm going to use pound yen. I'm going to hit pound yen. So here's pound yen, and it just creates a pound yen chart right, right, off, the, right off the bat. Um, this is a button for profiles. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. This is a button that turns uh, Market Watch on and off. This is a button that turns on what's called a data window. The data window is basically allows me to click on any particular candle, and it will tell me the high, the low of that candle, and the volume of that candle. And if I have an indicator on the chart, it will, it will give me an indicator reading as well. So that's a data window. Um, this button over here will turn or turn off the navigator. Um, and uh, this button over here will turn or turn off the terminal. So you can see they just, you know, they're all, they're sort of duplicatory here. You can turn them on, turn them off. Um, and the strategy tester we'll get to in, in uh, webinar two. So let's do place an order in both MetaTrader 5 and MetaTrader 4. So I'm gonna hit the new order button here, and you can see that it just pops up a clean, clear window in pound yen because what it what it's going to right now this chart is highlighted so it's going to when i hit a new order it's going to use this whatever is the highlighted chart to trade but let's say i want to close this i'm just going to highlight dollar yen uh, chart if i were to do that i'm going to hit the new order window and now dollar yen pops up and by the way you can also choose everything from a drop down menu over here to to uh to make an order uh, the volume, remember we defaulted the volume to, to 0 0.1, and that now is going to be the volume. The default configuration is market. So that means you just simply click buy or sell, it's going to take, you know, take your order. But what if I wanted to make it into a pending order? What if I wanted to do a buy limit? And I wanted to buy dollar yen underneath the current price, say 108.25, right? If I were to do that, I'm just going to hit place. And now, you can see um, I have a pending order to buy 108.25. Now, what's cool about this, by the way, is that you can see that the pending order is green. That means it's within 10 pips of market price. I'm very, very close to getting my pending executed. So uh, I'll leave that there just for fun. And now I'm going to go to MT5 and do the exact same thing. It, you can see that in MT5, everything is much more user friendly, too, right? There is just, it, it, it's a warmer look. And it's more intuitive. So in this particular case, it just tells you new order. I'm going to click new order. In this case, I think the euro was was um, highlighted, but let's um, let's highlight dollar yen because I'm, we're going to rep replicate the same process and hit new order. Same idea. It, you see, it's 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 all the same idea. Um, in this particular case, the volume is is not even there. So we'll put zero. Oh no, I don't want to do one. I want to do sorry. I want to do one zero. Yeah, zero one's fine. Doesn't matter. Um, and again, uh, it is a market execution. If I wanted to do a pending order, I'm just going to go pending order. I'm going to do buy limit, and um, same kind of a thing. I'm going to say uh, one o eight twenty five. Now, just to show you, I, I'm certainly able to do this, to do the same thing on MT four. But just to show you, I can also attach a stop to this thing and say one o eight my stop. And I could put a target of, uh, I don't know, 108.50, just for argument's sake. And now, um, oh, sorry, I, I changed my volume. I have to go change my volume. Now I can um, hit uh, place and um, be orders placed. And you can see, um, say, okay. So now um, I basically have a buy limit at 108.25, right? Uh, with a stop, with a take profit at uh, 108.50 and um, uh, a stop loss at 108.00, right? So um, it's it's very very simple to place an order in um, either MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5. Okay, let me see if there's any any additional questions here now. No. Um, yes. So Osman is asking me about time frames, and where you're actually moving in the direction that I want to show you. So the next order of business is, let's create a good looking chart. Let's create a chart that we like. I'm going to first start at MetaTrader 4, and then I'm going to go to MetaTrader 5, okay? So let's go to MetaTrader 4. Here's MetaTrader 4. And the default looking feel of MetaTrader 4, and MetaTrader 5 for that matter, is this black chart. They give you like these green candles, and usually they're not even green candles, they're green bars. 
you can do candlesticks, bars, or line graphs, right? So I'm, I'm going to click this over here. And if I would click the line, it becomes a line graph. If I click this over here, it's a candle. And in order for you to really see that, I'm going to just highlight this and zoom it in. And uh, if I click this, it becomes a bar, right? I hate all of this. It's certainly up to you. I mean, this is this is, is very much a personal choice. But I like a nice, clean, white-looking um, chart. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to right-click on this. I'm going to go to Properties, and I'm going to first and foremost choose a background that I like. So in this case, I'm just going to choose a uh, like a white background. Is this white? White. Yeah, it's a white background. Okay. And I'm going to choose for my candles because I'm really like only trading candles. I don't even like bars. For my bullish candle, I would like my bullish candle to be blue. And for my bearish candle, I would like it to be red because that's, that's obviously the much more um, you know, intelligent candle that I like. Um, in this particular case, you can see that, that the outline of the candles is, is green, which is fine. I really, I'm not going to fool around with trying to uh, modify that. Uh, but uh, now I'm just going to say, okay, and let's go to the candles. And you see, this is how my candles look. Now, there's one other thing that I absolutely despise on my charts, which is this grid. I don't like the grid. So there's two ways to get rid of the grid. You can go right-click in Properties, and you can go to Common, and you can just simply unclick Grid, okay? And you say Fine. And now it's nice and clean. Uh, or you can just simply do Control G, which will bring the grid, the grid back, or Control G, and then we'll take the grid out, and um, you know, we, and we get rid of it. So here's a chart that I kind of like, right? That I that I find uh, halfway decent, and I can you know, and I can work with this chart because, um, especially when I you know when I pop it up, because visually this to me is much easier to follow uh, than a chart that, that 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 they give you as a default. Now, how do I make sure that every single currency pair, every single instrument that I want to trade uh, looks like this by default. Very, very simple. What I do is I go into this bot uh, button over here. It's a, it's a template button. And I'm going to save this particular look and feel template name as default. Just the word default. So once I save this template as default, Right? Watch what happens. This is this is um, what is this? This is Euro dollar, right? So now I want to go and um, let's look at pound. I'm going to create new chart in pound, and look, my pound chart looks exactly like my Euro chart. Nice, clean, white with all the candles that I want. That's my default look. So we will do the exact same thing in MT5. I'm going to go over here into properties, right? Um, I'm going to get rid of grid because I really hate the grid. So you can see that already takes care of the grid. Now I'm going to go into colors and the background scheme. You can actually choose a scheme like you can actually choose it. It will show you like this will be a, a scheme like this, green on black, um, black on white, it's, this is a scheme that, that a lot of people like to use. If you start with a black on white scheme, which is very cool, then you can just modify your candles, which is what I like to do, by making it blue and by making my bare candle red and say, okay. And now this is this is actually my preferred scheme. I really love this looking this scheme. This, this is what I like to uh, to maintain. So same process, by the way, same process. See, this is this is super clean. I really like this. Uh, if you guys like this kind of look, I'm happy to show you how to do this. So the difference here, however, is we're going to um, save the template, but it's a different protocol in MT5. In MT5, the way we save a template is we have to go into the charts window. We go into templates, and we go into save template. And here we're going to use the word default again. Same process, but it's just simply hidden in a little bit of a different place. Okay, I would say save. Now this was your dollar, right? Let's do I don't know dollar Swiss new chart window. 
And you see that instantaneously Dallas Swiss now looks uh, beautiful and uh, template to myself. So now we've created a template into, um, into our world and are able to modify it um, and keep it this way. And of course, um, we can make many different templates. Let's say you guys want to create a dark template. Let's just choose something like this. Um, and I'm going to delete all these indicators. We're not going to use um, indicators because that's going to be chapter two or, or webinar two. We're going to take a look at the indicators. But um, let's say this is a black uh, chart and you guys prefer this kind of a look. So I'm going to go to properties and let's just say we're going to choose a scheme. I don't know, yellow and black. Is that okay? Whatever. Um, and the bullish candle, we'll just we'll just make the bullish candle the same and bearish candle red. And we're going to everything is, is defaulted, that's fine. And we want this one candlesticks. And we'll say okay. And now we've got candlesticks. Now, if you guys like this look, and by the way, um, we can also get rid of the uh, um, get rid of the uh, look. Now, let's say, you know, say you like this this look. Well, some people do. You know, it's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into charts, templates, save template, and here we'll call this um, dark. Okay, dark, save. Right now. Let's say I'm trading dollar CAD. I'm going to go new chart window. The default of dollar CAD is my white look. But what if I just didn't want, you know, I really did, did not um, like this particular look. I like the, the dark look. So I'm going to go to charts, templates, dark. And now dollar CAD is changed to dark. So now we can control the look and feel of any chart we like um, simply by, by doing this. Okay. So let me stop right here and take a look at some of the questions that you guys may have. Uh, okay, so uh, all sorts of trading questions and activate trailing stops. Those are those are all going to be questions we're going to we're going to address in webinar two. Today we're just going to look at the look and feel of structures. So one look and feel question I'm getting is from Osman is, can I have non-standard time frames? Okay. So this is a great question. This is one. This is another one of those things that differentiates um, MT5 from MT4. So let's go back to MT4. This is MT4, right? And MT4 essentially has the uh, vanilla time frames: M one minute time frame, five minute, fifteen minute, thirty, one hour. Sorry, one hour, four hour, daily, weekly, monthly. Okay. So that's fine. Um, let's put this on a one hour here. Um, but it's limited. That's that's all they give you, right? If we go to if we go to MT5, and again the as you can see they're a little bit different where they're located, but the functionality here is quite good. If we go to charts and we go to time frames, MT5, in addition to all of the time frames that already um, exist in MT4, if you go into this minutes subgroup, you can go into all sorts of crazy minutes, like a four minute time frame. Okay, I can I can look at this on a four minute time frame or some other uh, component that's sort of unusual. Um, you could even go into unusual hours, right? You can go into a three hour time frame uh, or you know a two hour two hour you know two hour candles are actually kind of very cool to look at. Um, so yes, the the question uh, from Osman is that in MT5 you're able to um, have a lot more functionality, a lot more granularity. To what you're doing the webinar will be recorded do not worry everybody uh, needs to not worry not only is it going to be recorded but we're going to caption it so you guys can, can follow it on so today we took a look at the way to download the software to get comfortable with the basic parameters of where the quotes are to place trades on a point and click basis in both in both um, platforms and uh, to design charts to our liking. There's only one other thing that I wanted to cover with you today, guys, and that's the idea of profiles. And profiles is simply a batch, a batch of charts 
that you'd like to be able to recall from the beginning to end. In other words, you want to be able to, at a single click, recall a, a whole bunch of charts. Let's just say this particular batch of charts, which has a white background on, on dollar Swiss, uh, dollar Canada on three hour time frame, um, dollar yen on a one hour time frame, pound dollar, um, let's just make pound dollar on a four hour time frame. And let's get rid of the CCI, which is really a useless indicator. Oops, Oops. get rid of this. And let's just yes, that is New York City. There is no webinar I ever do that does not have sirens going off of it, so everybody is used to that already. Um, I'm just going to put I don't know moving averages. I'm just putting trend adaptive moving average. I, it's fine. I, you know some some nonsense indicator. So. Let's just say, you know, I want to keep this pound and uh, I'm going to get rid of Swiss tab because I already have a Swiss tab and I have a Euro tab. That's fine. So I want this look and feel to be kind of preserved. How do I do that? Well, it's very, very simple. I can go into file profiles or we can go into this um, little tab over here called manage profiles. But let's just go to file profiles. I'm going to save this profile, save this profile as Boris special okay now now suppose I want to change to some of the other profiles that I have on my on my uh, template so let's say I want to go into the British pound profile so now I've, I've changed my profiles to British pound and all of a sudden all my charts change to British pound and there's all sorts of incredibly bizarre configurations with lots of useless uh, indicators on there um, and uh, that's fine so I'm looking at all of this stuff, and maybe I'll look at the British pound over here with MACD and stochastics, and another one MACD and stochastics, and all sorts of other stuff. But now I want to go back to that beautiful layout with all sorts of charts that I created for myself. How do I do that? All I have to do is go into File, Profiles, and I'm going to go to Boris Special, and ta-da! All of my look and feel, and all of my charts are here. And on Thursday, I'm going to take it one step further and show you how you could preserve a profile that not only will have a look and feel but will actually trade for you at a, at a one-click notice which is really really cool and that's going to be um, very very useful so that's the basic overlay of metatrader 4 metatrader 5 um, now i'm going to open it up a little bit to questions because i want to keep this to a um, to a sort of a sane amount of um, basis. Um, great questions. There are a couple of questions I'm asking me, can I draw on the charts? You absolutely can draw on the charts. You can do um, you know, horizontal lines, you can do trend lines, you know, you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, you can do channels, right? Up here, you can do Fibonacci retraces, you can do text, you can say hi Boris. And let's make it, I don't know, color black, just because we're fun. Okay, whatever. Um, you can do a million different things. These are all the, um, you can draw arrow, you can do thumbs up, you know, you can do uh, check sign right over here, right? You can do a million different things um, in, a, in a million different ways. You can make it bigger, I think, I believe, right? I'm going to get rid of this here. I get rid of this. Um, so yes, um, the functionality here is quite large. Um, and um, we're going to cover indicators and all the other components next week. So today we're just looking at the bare bones, basic, clean stuff. Okay, of of uh, um, of what we want to do. So, um, so by the way, let's say I created this whole big, messy, ugly little thing, right? And remember, remember, um, I, I like my charts very, very clean. What's a, what's a quick, easy way to do that? I'm going to go to charts, templates, and I just go to default, and boom, 
it all disappears, right? This is my default look, and now it's all set up, um, and it's uh, you know it's ready to go. Yes, scripts. Next week, or excuse me, next uh, next Thursday, we will cover indicators, EAs, and scripts, the full component of the more advanced um, programmatic part of um, of MT4. Today, I wanted to just introduce everybody to the look and feel of the of the program, so that those of you who are completely nov uh, novices uh, can get comfortable with the software, and those of you who are not novices can just sort of refresh the basic functionality of the software. All right, so final questions, final questions on just the look and feel. Um, you see the differences between, between um, uh, Pepperstone MT4 and MT5. And uh, a couple of other key things here, sort of like just to remember. So everybody has uh, asked me, how do I, where do I find my templates? Where do I find my profiles? Where, where are they buried? In both MT4 and MT5, the single most important thing you'll be doing all day long is going to file open data folder. So let me first of all take it to MT4. If you go to file open data folder, right, it will take you to the key directory, to the absolute key directory that uh, contains all of the information you need. You will never be able to navigate it without doing this because the directory is, is buried seven uh, roots deep inside Windows. And the only way to get it is to open data folder in order, in order to navigate it quickly. And then this directory has all these subfolders, including this is MQL5, where the experts folders lie, the indicators folders lie, um, and the scripts folder lie. Um, and then in this particular subdirectory, we have the templates and the profiles, okay? So this is MT4. This is where you would find the profiles. So there's profiles here, British Pounds, you know, Swiss Frank and all the other profiles. Um, and uh, file open data folder sorry um, templates and here's all the templates that that mt4 comes with and here's the default template for mt5 okay this is the mt4 terribly sorry it's mt4 the important thing to remember is mt5 is just a tad bit different so same process file open data folder however however the Profiles and the templates are buried a little bit deeper. They're buried under the MQL5 folder, and then they're buried in the profiles folder. So the profiles then, the profiles themselves have um, charts, which is where where Boris Special and British Pound and Default and Euro. This is where you would find all the profiles. I would navigate back to profiles, and there's a subfolder called templates. And this is the subfolder where the dark template is and the default template is. So um, MT5 has a couple of uh, directories deep down where you find these things, but otherwise it's the exact same process. Super easy to navigate, super easy to copy and save this, super easy to um, paste all the stuff in there. And those are the things I'm gonna show you at the beginning of webinar two to kind of show you how to recalibrate, recapture um, all of the data that, that you may have saved in, an, in another MT4 and MT5 and how to bring it into a fresh MT4 and MT5. Okay, let me see if there's any other questions here. Um, yeah, it's, all, it's, it's, it's possible to save trend lines. It's possible that whole little you know, drawing mess that I made for you, you can save that as a template and, 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 and it will uh, it will save for you. Um, as you can see, I'm a little bit, you know, Marie Kondo. I like to keep my my charts very clean. Um, I don't draw anything. I don't do anything. Um, so I'm pretty much have like almost an allergic reaction to, uh, you know, to making my charts anything but price driven. So, um, <laughs> so um, uh, for those of you who are completely opposite. Feel free, be my guest. You have lots of drawing tools. You can save them all as a template and, and they will be saved there for you. And then you can save those, those even as a, as, a, as a profile and they'll be saved for you. Um, so somebody's asking me just one, one sort of interesting trading question. After you place it, uh, after you, let me just get this question. This is a good question. Job is asking me. When you place trading, uh, uh, place a uh, trading order on pending, what should happen after that? 
it's going to stay there in perpetuity, okay? Unless you put a, a unless you put some kind of a limit on it, it will just literally wait until it comes in. As a matter of fact, I'm actually close to, close to bid here, right? Look at the yen has come come down a little bit. Well, it's 27. It's not exactly so. I'm two I'm two pips away from buying dollar yen here, right? Dollar yen was like it was around 30 30 31 when I started talking to you. I put a bid at 25, and maybe it'll come back down and I'll get executed. But it will just stay there until the price comes down and then it will get executed and then it becomes a market order and if it gets executed then i'm going to be long dollar yen at, at uh, 108.25 okay okay all right so all the rest of the questions are uh, going to relate to the second webinar we're going to do so i'm going to leave you guys uh here we did a good job here, did a full hour. Um, I think I'm actually going to post this particular version as our as our copy version, because this was, I, I think, um, a little bit cleaner and better than the one I did in the morning. And um, you can definitely modify uh, all these parameters. We're gonna, we, we will discuss how you can modify every parameter here uh, in webinar two. So thank you so much, guys. Um, I will have this, and look, maybe we're gonna get done um maybe we're going to get done when i get off the webinar at 108.25 um uh, hope you guys enjoyed this and uh we will make a video out of this we'll put a caption on it and then everybody who's registered for the webinar is going to have access to it so uh, it'll just take a little bit of time but uh we're going to get all this done for you thank you for coming uh we're going to meet again on thursday uh that's 48 hours from now same time and then we're going to talk about indicators, scripts, and EAs, and we'll show you how all of those things work.